just a reminder. Um, I have this beautiful thing here. So whoever wants to start with a question, I have questions, but I will let you start first. Uh, let me know so I can bring you the mic so you can everything. Hi. Um, myself and Nettie Turner here, we, we've actually set up a and two directories. One is the UK Arts Directory, um, which is for creatives, you know, writers, musicians, artists. Yes. Um, we've just recently set up the UK Music Directory. Obviously, I picked up on the fact that it, it did say on the screen about directories, you know, missing out on people as individuals. Um, you know, we are trying to actually build a community and we do you know we we are trying to engage with them directly at the moment is there any like suggestions that you can make to us in regards so we don't want to lose that but obviously we're a new site and there's the chance of us growing because the uk arts directory has got 60,000 outreach already um you know we're lucky we've got a good team of bloggers that deal with obviously different genres on there but the music one would be an important one for us, as I think. Yeah, and it's a free site as how, well. How do you brand yourselves as? I mean, what, what's the message you come across? Uh, register with us Fr because... We are free to join, free to use. Free, yes, but... Um, we want to be a platform, you know, for people to actually connect with each other. That was the original idea um, with the UK Arts Directory. It was, it was a writer who was trying to find an illustrator and he'd been on LinkedIn and he just found that there wasn't one place for people to connect. So what we've realised is obviously this could be the same, obviously whether it was music or film, you know, pushing it outwards, authors, books and, and that sort of thing. Well, a personal way in order to attract uh, more users is to give them incentives. Now, for a free website, the incentive that you can give them is more promotion, more prominent place on your website being featured. Uh, your, their profiles being featured if they manage to do a series of tasks that would help your website rank better in the search engines. That's a major consideration. Then um, perhaps you should uh, try to uh, think of some uh, marketing tricks, different sections of the website specializing on niches because it's much easier to rank and get more popular for very specific uh, uh, segments of the industry rather than being uh, an all-in-one type of uh, website. Yeah. Where uh, these subcategories should be promoted heavily on Google by placing links for, that, for these specific subsections to many other industry websites out there linking back and promote them on your social media. Having, uh, giving the users the sense that uh, they are uh, more involved with their immediate peers. And uh, create discussions, try to engage them as much as possible to address their questions, post these questions in a forum or any other platform that you like in order for them to feel that they are engaged in a community. In, in, in which other ways do you make them feel like they're part of a community? Well, we, I mean, obviously, we're just starting out on the UK Music Directory again, so there, there'll be a forum, but obviously it's being built. We are doing, you know, parts of it at a time. Uh, once somebody set up an actual profile, there is, like, options below, you know, like the StumbleUpon, Twitter, Facebook. So if somebody sets up a profile, they can actually share it out on, you know, all of those mediums, get their friends to share it. That's the way we'd like it you know, to go out? Uh, in order for it to get noticed in the best possible, ma possible manner is to rank high on the search results. This is not easy for a website that comes up now, but uh, the search engines will give you a chance as long as you follow some rules. The most basic ones of them are technology-based. The way the website has been built, the tags that are there, the type of language that was used, if the programmer has taken specially, special care in making everything uh, search engine uh, SEO uh, friendly. And often the problem with directories and uh, websites that uh, encourage social interactions between their members is duplication of pages because most of the 
uh, languages that are used to develop these types of websites have this <coughs> issue, which is not very well perceived by the search engine. So before you go and build a big website uh, with all the add-ons, design it to be search engine friendly. And this is something that it's done from the beginning. If you consider it later, you will do many, t uh, many times the work that you could, uh, many times the work that you should have done. And uh, also it will not have the same effect because your, let's say, online real estate, your domain name, has specific value. And if it has received even tiny penalties from search engine algorithms, this will stay there for a, a good enough time that it may be critical to your success because now you have something that matters. Tomorrow it, you may find 10 copies of it which may be uh, the programmers and the people who build it may be more technically adept in order to take it uh, further up the search engine results. So build it search engine friendly and uh, try to engage uh, uh, your users in a more personal manner, receiving responses for every single question, etc. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, yeah, it was kind of half a comment, half a question, really. Uh, I was intrigued uh, that you mentioned Wikipedia. Yes. Um, possibly not the most obvious place to go. Uh, we have got a, a band page on Wiki, uh, and they're very, very unkeen to have bands on there. Yeah. And when you build it, you get a message saying something along the lines of, uh, Unless there's something notable about your band, and they don't define what notable means, uh, we might just delete it at the drop of a hat. Um, and there's a little kind of thing that just stays on the top of the page forever. Now ours has been on there for like a year or something, and so far it's still there. But just kind of be aware that if you're putting a band thing on there, you probably need to try and come up with something unique or something that says this act is worth having this record uh, you know, because obviously I guess there's a million little bands that come and go in a week that would otherwise just swamp the place. And I guess that's probably what they're trying to avoid. Of course, yes. Well, one of the most important considerations in Wikipedia is getting uh, <coughs> um, reputable editors to edit your page. People that have done a thousand edits on Wikipedia and have raised their status uh, into being high profile, let's say, moderators their edits will count much more than someone that has done just uh, two or three edits. However, uh, I mentioned uh, Wikipedia because Wikipedia is a passport. Uh, several blogs will not place you onto either a directory they have or have a mention to your brand or music. But if you have a Wikipedia page, they will because automatically it means that you are somehow important. Yeah, I think that's the implication, isn't yes. it? There has to be something about you that separates you just from the, the masses. Yes, but since it's there, it's good to have it. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, um, I was just wondering, um, how do you manage, or will try to manage, um, things that are beyond your control? Like, say, somebody else uploads a video on YouTube in which you don't like the way you sing, or, or something like that. Uh, will you ignore it? Will you try to contact the company to see if it can be deleted? Would you, how, could you, how can you control all these things that other people can do? Yes, you never ignore it. No? If it's something that is clearly defamatory, yes, you contact uh, the webmaster or the moderator of that particular website. YouTube has uh, a lot of guidelines on how to handle and report, get your friends to report it as well. But otherwise, the best uh, way to protect yourself is by being proactive rather than correcting uh, the damage that has been done. And the way that you're proactive is through all of these ways, building a very strong profile over a period of at least one and a half, two years, and updating all your websites, all your social media platforms continuously, 
So the next post that will go out there or the next video or something that defames you or you don't want it to appear goes out there, it will not appear on the first page, uh, two pages of Google unless it's being placed there by mainstream uh, press, the Daily Mail or the Sun. Otherwise, that's the only real way <coughs> to uh, protect yourself. And uh, you should always have in mind that the more popular you become, the more enemies you will have. On YouTube, you do take down notices. Yes. On YouTube, you do take down notices. If you're the copyright holder, you can have them removed immediately. Yes. We do about 40 a week. So you just go on their site, you can get into it. <clears throat> it takes about 20 pages to find it. But you can just, as a copyright holder, have it removed. We get it all the time with kids film gigs and you get some horrible piece of footage filmed upside down on a camera. And if you've got an official video, it detracts from the views that your official video's got. So we just put takedown notices in um, as a regular. Do I need that with my voice? Um, um, just put takedown notices in. We do it as a daily thing. It's a pain, but it stops, you know. We, uh, some t we do a gig and then we'll, next morning we'll have like 200 horrible bits of video up there which uh, aren't very good for the image or the brand. <coughs> so it's the, it's the best way to do it if you own the copyright. Um, but by the way, um, so Ian here uh, has been working in the industry for 35 years? Is that correct? Um, I have a question for you, because since we're talking about online reputation, and you've seen the change from non-internet era to then the fully digital immersed era, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm not implying that you're old, okay? He's, oh. He's 25, just like me, uh, like George Clooney. But how have you seen reputation evolving over time? And we need this so we can cut the... Uh, in terms of reputation, I mean, the problem is now you've got so much access to, to acts, whereas in the, back in the day you'd have had... Your only reputation would have been via a fan mail. If you're, if you're a big fan, you, you join a fan club, and that would be your main access to the band, other than seeing it on the TV or radio or press. Obviously, nowadays... You can be out shopping and suddenly the next thing there's a photo on Twitter or Instagram or there's a video on Vine or a video on Keek or, you know, there's, everything you do is under the microscope. <clears throat> so, obviously, we've got a, one of our bands is quite high profile because they're actually on the X Factor um, and they get followed everywhere, even now. And um, every gig they do, you know, going in the gig, you get footage up there and then coming out and they grabbing a burger and they get filmed with a burger and, you know, so... There's much more exposure now, basically. Uh, you could control it a lot easier before. I mean, obviously, you can never control the red tops because they print what they want to print and they still continue to do so. Um, and that's another thing that you spend half your time trying to prevent happening and threaten lawsuits and stuff. But um, predominantly, yeah, it's just a, it's a much more open field. So you've got to be a lot more careful about what you do. Um, if you're trying to, you know, whether you like it or not, irrespective of the artistic <coughs> integrity of your project, it is a brand. So whatever the validity of the project in certain people's eyes, whether it be a pop, rock, pop record or a rock record or a reggae record or a jazz record, it's still a brand. You're trying to sell it to a, a, a community, whether, it's a, whether you're trying to get a crossover record or you're appealing to people who want, to, you want someone to buy your record and a CD in a pub. It's all got a validity. But it's just the access to the, the, access to the market is so much greater than it used to be. Um, and it's continually evolving. You know, every week there's a new thing that pops up. Oh, you've got to be on this, you've got to be on that. And you can get bogged down in all of it. So <clears throat> what we do with our acts is we tend to, uh, depends on the demographic of the audience they're reaching. So we've got one act that appeals to a very young audience, a kind of like 14 to 18. We've got a rock band that's obviously an older audience, kind of 22 to 30. Um, and you find that you get a completely different response on different media. Right. But in terms of in terms of industry wise i mean if i get sent stuff to listen to which i probably get i don't know probably get 30 40 emails a week saying will you sign us you know will you manage us will you consult us whatever i find the easiest thing for me to receive personally is soundcloud links it's not easy way to get a button listen to it it's not not for me i don't see it working it's fine people send you mp3 sometimes you know people send you mail big files and you know three albums worth of stuff you know when am i going to have time to listen to three albums you know it's um, so it's just picking the right the thing that suits what your project is. But certainly in terms of this overall picture of, of protecting what you've got out there, we're very firm about what we do. I mean, a lot of people say, "I'll leave the fan stuff out there because it makes the fans feel important." But if you're launching, a, a, say, a single and you've got a video, an official video, and then suddenly you've got 50 
versions of that and other people put up a lyric video and then they put up a, a video of various photos of the band, you know. And, and all it does is drag attention away. So if you've got like our videos on Vivo and then suddenly you've got 40 YouTube videos of the same track but without the official video, but with the track. So it's just a case of trying to stay on top of it and work out what, if any of those illegal ones work for you, you can leave them up. But nine times out of ten, they're a dreadful representation of what you're doing. So you take them down. Okay. So it's, uh, you just got to be more aware now, I think. It's 24-7. It's it's, uh, there's, a, there's a camera everywhere. There's one over there. Um, my, my question is, so you mainly focus on, on the Google results. But there is something else that is happening now, and I see, I, I see it as a reputation, right? Viral videos, viral content. So you see that somebody does something, and then it goes viral. This might be defamatory for you, and it might not be good for people to see it. However, because it does spread through people, and people find it cool, then probably you cannot stop it. So what is your advice towards content? which might be good, and how can you make content like this, you know, like good content that can spread your reputation in other ways except for Google results? Well, it's a matter of branding, really, um, and how, what strategies you will decide to uh, continue with. It's not a matter of uh, saying, let's say a viral video comes out that defames you. It's not always the best way to try to dispute it and say that they are wrong, I am right. The best way to do it is that produce a very large number of uh, posts, articles, and very good quality content out there that overshadows it. And that's uh, the way it's done over the Internet. And that's the way it uh, uh, comes up uh, in the real world as well. Now, having a negative publication uh, will always be preferable to the people because they like to gossip. They like to see it, and sometimes it's being perceived <coughs> as a positive marketing trick. It depends on what it portrays. But um, when you have this situation, yes, you become very active, post as much material that are positive about you out there, and uh, that will certainly... Um, result uh, in a good way for you. But of course, sometimes when we have an organized defamation case, then uh, you, must just, you may just produce much more content than uh, the negative content that the other party is producing. And in several occasions, that is uh, usually the case. It's a contest of who will produce most and be present in absolutely everything. Don't uh, Try to contradict it. Don't lose your temper where something negative comes out. But try to enter a discussion and prove your points without trying to directly pay too much attention. Because then you might have the Barbara Streisand effect, which is, is something that, a term that is taken from the name of a very well-known actress, where she had a villa in Malibu that she didn't want anyone to find out about. And uh, apparently one paparazzi found uh, a good place to hide and took some very nice shots of the villa and published them on a uh, mainstream website. Now she became furious and ordered her lawyers to get a super injunction against uh, that website in order to take it down. But at that moment, uh, the press community and the bloggers and everyone didn't really realize that this was something that really mattered to her. They thought, you know, just some uh, paparazzi pictures of your villa. They didn't know that it really hurt her. She didn't want it to get out there. And once they found out, uh, it made about 250,000 copies in different websites on the Internet, making it po impossible to ever remove it. So you must be very careful in your strategy and it very much depends on what is the thing that they write about you. And uh, being too aggressive in taking it down sometimes is not the best way. But even if you manage to take it down, let's say that uh, there is a YouTube video that has defamatory content about you or your brand, your music or uh, 
your profession and uh, you go through the legal procedures and you take it down, its title will re still remain in the Google results, especially when you don't have anything else out there that keeps getting out, especially when you don't produce content that will overshadow it. So keep putting content out there, engage your audience, and put as much relevant information about you and quality information about you out there as possible, and do that non-stop. And uh, that's your best protection against uh, negative uh, viral videos or posts, where when you're a celebrity, they're bound to be uh, uh, viral and go to many people. Now, if you're not a celebrity, and they go viral, it may get some good results for you. You never know. You must carefully assess on what is the subject of that content. Okay, so um, to sum up what you just said, um, when you're an artist that is just starting out, that most people that I, that I see here probably they want to know now I'm starting out, how do I get good results you know, in the first two pages? So your advice is to we cannot really hide now from the web, so you just put as much information as possible, so at least yes. you can F control first, what, what is out. Yes, first you select and you start with the most popular websites, because these are the ones that will rank top on Google results. You build your profiles, you build full profiles, you enter quality content on there, something that people uh, see and they are interested in reading it, at least uh, a good percentage of them. And then you carry on to the less significant one, like creating a forum from scratch or, en or trying to create uh, an industry-specific blog or website from scratch. You start with the popular ones in order to, for them to occupy, let's say, your page one in Google. And then you carry on and keep updating all the time. Right. Um I would like to see if the, from, okay, fr yeah, exactly. From the artist's perspective, I would like to hear somebody talking from their experience. Hi, um, the, well, I've got two questions, really. Um, first, first one is, um, with the pictures, I know that you mentioned about pictures and videos. Um, I find at gigs, when I'm performing, people take pictures, they take videos. You know, I don't always know the people. And um, it's one thing to say to somebody, oh, can I, you know, you, as an artist, I don't think you'd have the time as well to go up to that person and say, oh, you know, you're, you're videoing me, uh, where's it going to be? And it's not really polite as well as a, uh, and, and professional, I find. Um, but I find, um, you know, I don't know where all these pictures and videos are going. Um, I know you said about YouTube tra tracking the videos from that perspective, but as for pictures, you don't know when or if they're going to be shown or put up. Um, and as an independent artist, I personally haven't got, you know, all the time to to track every single person that takes a photo when I'm performing or particularly likes my music and, you know, wants to video it. Um, as I, you know, I have people from not from this country that come and they will take that video away with them. It's a bit difficult to track that. And it might not be on a YouTube format. It might be on something that's in their yes, country, learning. you know. On a hidden profile, on a Facebook personal profile that uh, is not indexed by Google, but it might be seen by 2,000 people. Yeah. Yes, of course, anywhere. Well, that's more a legal issue than a technical issue. So nobody has a right to post a picture without your permission, a picture that you're in. So once you tell them, please take it down, and you realize that something is there, then they must. Otherwise, you can sue them and uh, get compensation. But how do you find in the first place that uh, something like that is out there? The only thing you can find out, and Google has amended its search engine a few uh, years back, yeah. is if you know which picture you're looking for, then you can track it, if I mean, you have it. I do have, you know, I have Google Alerts, which tells me every time, you know. Not Google time. Alerts. But, um, yes. but I, you know, obviously I don't know if somebody came in, for instance, take a picture here, and I just happened to be singing here, and someone took a picture and went, came in and came out. I wouldn't know, you know, I'm as, once you're performing, you can't actually, your, 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 your aim is performing, um, you know, not watching everybody that takes a photograph of you at that time when you're performing, so you cannot... You know, you cannot actually 
um, your, your worry, though, because in a, let's say in a court, you must uh, justify exactly what type of damage was caused mm -hmm. to you by the person that published the picture, let's say, and appears on the search results, would be that the picture would not be good, of good quality, and represents you in the best yeah. possible way. Now, if that's the case, what you need to do <coughs> is present on Google the images that you want to be portrayed. So the images, your best the images, your best professional pictures, make sure you put them everywhere, build a profile to all these websites, put them there so they will rank first and someone will never find that other picture unless someone decides to dedicate uh, days or weeks or months of their lives uh, uh, placing it uh, everywhere. Now, if the consideration is that, someone can even take a picture, a snap of you on their phone while you're walking on the street, while you're eating, or wherever you are. They don't have the right to do so, and you cannot really be absolutely protected or prohibit anyone that is everywhere out there when you come out uh, to take uh, a snap of you. But uh, that's where you either use uh, legal means if that person refuses to uh, withdraw it, but with care, you don't want to create the negative effect, them understanding so that you'd have to So you'd have to wait until they actually posted it public until until yes. you would be able to, well, to know. I mean, because obviously some people... Obviously, you must have a disclaimer on your website yeah. that uh, uh, material that uh, display you and do not carry your approval cannot be displayed, etc., etc., a legal disclaimer. But other than that, you cannot control it, no. I mean, this kind of goes into my next question as well, because I do have a website, but I am also on social media websites as well. And, um, you know, in... And, you know, I've been told, obviously, it's, it's important to be on the social um, websites as well. But I feel that, you know, obviously, when you're putting your stuff forward and you're presenting with your website, um, a lot of people do want to know, are you on Facebook? Are you on this? Are you on that? And those things become really important. Um, even if you have got a website as an artist, I feel that um, people want a quick option. They don't necessarily want to go to the website and then go through, you know, read up your bio, go through all these things, and then, um, you know, they would rather just go on SoundCloud, just hear the stuff, rather than go through that route. With the, the pictures, and, you know, I have professional photographs on my website anyway, but it doesn't, you know, I can say to someone, here's my website, but they're still going to take pictures at a, a venue, and they will still have those pictures. They could keep those pictures until, you know, something happens, and then they could post it then. I wouldn't have any control over that until that time. Yes, you don't. And uh, that always happens. Yeah. Uh, even you could see tomorrow a, a picture of you that you've never know, uh, have known that was taken be on uh, the front page of a newspaper. That's so, it. So, so do you feel they are in breach. So do you feel that the website is, the website is more important than the social, social no, website? No, everything is important together in conjunction. Everything together. Not uh, You must absolutely... Uh, car um, cover a wide range of online resources on your name I've, in order uh, yeah, to be I'm, relatively safe. I'm on quite a lot, but I, I, I do feel, obviously, it seems as though you have to be on even more and more and more and more, and it's growing and it's growing and it's growing. And, you know, obviously, I'm trying not to you know, detract from my website, but obviously I have to give other people options to find me as well. So it's, it's you know, how many must I be on to attract, you know, attract, because there's, I know you've mentioned, you know, there's a few that you've mentioned, there's a few actually that I, do, I didn't know of that you've mentioned as well. So. There are many that we haven't mentioned, there are hundreds out there, of course, and uh, what is important is the ones that you are on, uh, engage with them, and creating a profile without uh, building a full profile or making some posts every now and then is useless. It's a waste of time. The ones you're on, you should uh, dedicate some time onto them or use one of the tools that we mentioned, that you can manage several social media networking yeah. sites through one platform. I think uh, Re Rebirth Nation is very good for, for that because it does, um, it does thing, and you can also do press kits and everything else from that. That's what very but good. One but, basic um, answer to that, enough, is when you've covered, let's say, the first two pages of Google results. Yeah, that, that, 
the statistics say that 99% of the users will not go past the second page, so you're quite safe. Uh, but on the other point, you said that s several people will just look at uh, a live streaming website and judge whether they like the music or not. Yes, they do. But when they like the music, they will Google you up. They will go to their website. They will like have you having a website, having a generic <laughs> web presence. It brings status to your name. And uh, this, in psychology terms, affects them. Thank you. Is there any other question? You got one. Can I just say, just to add to what you were saying about the defamatory pictures, I just like looking so I'm just on the other side of the coin. So you're right about um, you know, the more positive stuff you put out, the more it's going to come to the top of your website. There's another thing maybe just to consider. It's kind of maybe not great, but if you've got that horrible picture, well, it's not a great picture or not a great video, and I deal with loads of artists, and they've had the thing go, oh, it's really nice. They came along and did this video, and it's horrible. But... Um, the kind of thing is really just sometimes they've done it from a really good heart and you never know where somebody's come from or where they're going or where that person can contribute because they're, uh, what did you call them, brand enhancers or, or whatever your expression brand is, defenders. brand defenders. So they actually could be a really strong brand defender for you. So the thing is probably just to kind of not stress too much about that but just say you know thank you very much it's great you did it and and just keep on pushing out all your positive stuff because the benefit uh, would outweigh the negativity of just maybe a couple of hot, not very not particularly great pictures um so i thought i'd just mention that and that's happened to a lot of my artists and it's been a really fantastic way of um kind of really remaining engaged and not kind of just keeping a nice balance on it it's like PR in the non-digital world. Uh, you don't want to say something that someone may consider offensive and then you have the opposite effects. So your fan, the fan will say, I, I did it with the best part just to promote you and I love this video because you're very cute in it and I like this dress or whatever. <laughs> uh, but. <laughs> But yes, you won't like it because you have two big black circles around your eyes. But then again, it's your responsibility to put the images that you want on top. Yeah, I mean, I've had that myself when I've been filmed at shows. I hate myself being filmed and I've been hosting. And I said, you know, it's really lovely. The photographer, the official photographer has come and done like, all the bands and the events. And they've got this one be on stage looking like a complete nutcase. And I'm thinking, but that is just a really interesting thing that really I've never actually reflected that I'm a brand. And um, what that actually taught me was um, to do exactly what you are recommending. And in fact, you have to have better control of your own branding. Um, but you know, it's always going to happen as soon as you're performing or on stage in any way, you know, your stuff's out there. And people generally have quite a good heart. No, I'm not trying to do anything negative. Um, so I, I think that's really important, just keep a bit of a balance on it. Yes, and, and it's about planning as well. When you start your online campaign, you must have a rough idea of what kind of content you'll put on your website, what kind of content you will put on your social media profiles, so you keep it interesting for your followers. Yep, yep. Okay. I think we just have time for a couple more questions. Um, I was just wondering what your opinion on crowdfunding is. Um, first of all, disclaimer: I'm from Indiegogo. So, um, what your opinion? <laughs> what your opinion on is um, crowdfunding for marketing? And kind of touching on that, it does put yourself completely out there, like very transparent. Um, you don't really have the control of like who sees you, but then in that case, it's a really good thing because if people like you, then they'll give you money um, and support you. But what what are your opinions on? On so it. it's perfectly fine. If you're brave enough to embark in a world that you say my idea is great and so you are going to fund me for it, then people see it positively. Most people, apart from the ones that are jealous that they didn't do the same thing. So it's, it's fine. Yes, and it uh, puts a lot of, uh, let's say, positive uh, press uh, towards your project. You become known, which is generally a good thing. Even neutral type of exposure is a good exposure, as long as it gets up out there and uh, stops negative things from appearing up. Because negative things will appear, even if you're the best person in the world. There will always be someone that, because it is so easy 
to put something negative out there, they will. And that's that. And uh, crowdfunding is a good uh, way for a relatively or completely unknown uh, idea to become known. Um, I have, I have, as an artist, I have a story to tell um, about something bad that really happened and how I handled it, and it turned out to be really good. So there was this. So I was submitting my music for review, um, and there was this Danish website. It was the the largest Danish blog, and it was in English, right? So I said, all right, I'll, I'll send it over, and hopefully I'll get a review. So I got a review, and the review was one out of five. So and the, uh, the actually the content was poisonous. They hated my music, all right. So it was not just I don't like it; it's quite bad. It's they hated it. So my piano, they characterize as broken toy piano and some uh, amateur uh, electronics, you know, and, you know, especially these, these lyrics are really bad because they mean nothing, but this guy probably thought it was, so it was really bad. So what I did, first of all, I found the contact details of the person that wrote the review and I sent them an email and I, I said, thank you uh, for, for writing something about us. Uh, it might be not, not be great, but this reminds me that I need to get better every time. And at least there is a lesson to learn. Uh, luckily, I have people that adore my music and people that hate it. I don't have people in the middle that say, ah, all right. So he liked this comment, by the way. And that was it. I said, thank you. Thanks a lot for giving this opportunity. Maybe next time you, you will like what we have next, you know. And he came back to me and he said, Thank you very much for being so uh, so calm and not infuriated about about this. Most people, because I'm writing a lot of negative reviews, most people they they say bad things and they come back, you know, with hatred. And that's really nice of yours. Please send me over more stuff when you have something new. And when I send them over the the, the music video, they posted it direct on the website. Also, um, I posted this on my social media, and all the people where you say the the brand ambassadors. They came and they started writing comments, but they say, no, but this guy is blind and he, I don't know, like, this, your music is amazing. And some people went on the website, I told them, don't go and say anything shit. And they went to the website and they said, you, you absolutely suck. These, these people are great, you know, you know nothing about music. So there was a little bit of a war, although I didn't want to cause it. So I think it turned out to be something quite nice because I saw that a few people can support us, you know, and we're not alone. And I don't know, just one negative review was just one negative review for me. It was not something major to and die for. Uh, there are uh, people that uh, really want to go down the stream that is absolutely the opposite of what the mainstream press writes. So the worse the review is, the more fanatic they will become uh, for the brand because it's, it's, it's different. It's uh, contradicting uh, the mainstream. And that's a positive thing in music in certain times. So, yes, going mediocre, average, maybe is not so good. Going to the extremes, it is, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, any, any other question in general, except for Roman? Okay. Roman, you are the lucky guy. Cheers. Yeah, I would just like to ask uh, if you can put yourself in the position of an uh, emerging artist and you got, let's say, £3,000. You got your album and uh, now you want to decide if you're going to spend it on a good video or a PR company. Which one will be? It depends on the PR company. And uh, what are they supposed to do with that uh, the, amount of money? That you want to announce that the album is out and we get, or we got the video, or we got I, the album I believe we, with our video. With the social media and uh, the internet presence that you can have with very limited uh, amount of money, unless there is something negative that you want to correct, which can be very expensive business, you could uh, really get to the sense of what the audience wants. It's no good if you, s when you start off, you go right off spending money on any company. You must get the pulse of the audience, what they want, and then you will have a better idea when or where to spend that money. 
because you can instruct the PR company or any other company to do exactly what your audience wants. But you must have the experience. It's, sometimes it depends on your uh, niece of uh, music. If you want to spend uh, money on a PR company, you may have zero, zero results. But if you come to them with some data that uh, your audience liked that but didn't like that, it would make their job easier and your money would most likely don't go uh, wasted. So do your own research and engage your audience before you go into uh, a campaign. The, the peer company can help you create a brand, create a niche, but get some data from uh, the audience you can reach. Everyone must start from, some, uh, from a certain point. It's no bad thing to appear a nobody before you go to a PR company and you are the emerging artist of the decade. Uh, so do some research, think about your brand, see if it sells up to a certain point, and then have more data in order to approach a company to help you achieve a specific goal that you know or you feel that it will work. Because most companies will uh, uh, do exactly the same thing in the beginning. They will do market research. They will see which audience is best for what you're trying to promote, what you're trying to sell. And this, the first stage, you can do yourself. So it's better to save a bit of money in that uh, process. That's what I think. Can I say, as part of your audience, yeah. I wouldn't mind if you had no video out, because they're amazing live performers, by the way. Uh, the Rasputin brothers, um, and I would rather see more live shows than a video. So you'd better spend time, more time, like performing live. That, that's what the fan says. Oh, so we're gonna do the video. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 thank you. <coughs> All right. Any other question before we wrap up? Okay, okay. All right. Um, I don't know. I got. I got so much information about a subject that I didn't know that it was that important um, and I guess a lot of people will will go back home and, and keep thinking about it uh, so I would like let, let's run a round of applause for Mr. Costadinos Varsis. Uh, very interesting subject uh, just for your information I will put everything all the slides uh, the contact details of Costantinos and everything else we discussed we discussed today, I will put it on the website in due time. Uh, we'll have the video as well, so you can hear everything again. It was a lot of information today, so I don't expect everybody to process all the information today. Um, any questions you might have, uh, I will give you the email of Costantino, so just send directly to him. And if you want to use his service, yeah, it, go up for it. Um, and, and anything else, um, again, let's stay in touch. I'll keep sending you stuff, useful stuff and advice with everything else we've talked about. And hopefully we'll see you again next month, January, next year. And thanks a lot for being here. <laughs>